So back on our RAV4, last time we pulled the engine apart, it was seized up. The engine's destroyed, pretty much. It needs, it's not completely destroyed. It could be rebuilt for lots and lots of money, but it's just not worth it. So we came up with a solution. So let's see what that is. And there we have it. So the sharp eyed among you will notice that my RAV4s have doubled overnight. The cars are multiplying. It's not a good thing. This is a 2003 RAV4 and the transmission is shot. Also the body isn't in such great shape so I don't mind yanking the engine out of it. Uh, it's been tore up a little bit. Really the only nice piece about this thing is the interior and this back hatch. Everything else is, well, it's worn and beat. And the interior is showing some age and there's some things missing and scuffs and whatnot. Anywho, uh, this has the same engine in it. It's just a year newer. I think this has like 123,000 miles. Uh, we did get to hear it run. It has lots of front end damage. You can see the AC uh, condenser is pushed in there. Um, the radiator leaks. So we not, may not sure not to overheat it when we were moving it around and testing the engine. I tested the compression. On this engine and it was about 175 across all four cylinders which seems nice and healthy and they're all very close to each other they weren't all exactly 175 and probably if I would have tested a little bit more I only turned it over about three or four times on each test you know you turn it over maybe double that you might get a slightly higher bump up so you know it could be as high as 180 or a little higher than that but it's nice and healthy from what we can see. The oil is good. Seems like they maintained it. It does have a new throttle body on it. And so this engine is gonna go in this car and hopefully between the two of these we'll have one running vehicle. So as you can see, it's, uh, well, it's dropped below 70 degrees here in Florida. So we've all got our winter gear out. So here we are with the RAV4. We need to get the remains of this engine out of this car. And then we need to pull the engine out of that car and we need to evaluate the seals that we can't see like the rear main and everything before we go ahead with the install i'm not ordering any parts until i get that engine out but the first step is to get this old engine block out of here all right so there's not a whole lot of bolts holding this thing in there's a couple bolts holding the engine block to the transmission there's the uh, thermostat housing here and there's the AC compressor and there's a couple bolts back there for the upper bracket for the uh, drive shift across their ground line there a couple little things then we could just lift this thing straight up and out of here I guess there's nothing for it but to start turning bolts and removing parts so let's begin so I have everything disconnected except for the upper bell housing bolts here. I have the torque converter bolts out. I took the AC compressor out. It's tucked into the corner there. I took the mount for the drive shaft off. All the little electrical connections remaining. The housing for the thermostat. And I think, yeah, just the bell housing bolts and then we're ready. Rain has caught up with us. Probably can't see it, but it's here. We're gonna keep chugging along until it gets just too unendurable here, but I'll pour the, pull those bolts anyway and see where we're at. So for those of you who don't know, Svetlana here does a lot of our grunt work on the channel. I don't think I've used this loader for actually digging since the very first video where I put the loader on and showed it digging as a demonstration. It's not very good for digging anyway because it doesn't have any teeth and this bucket looks like something somebody fabbed up and it doesn't have a cutting edge or anything but that's fine because I don't really use it for digging so let's uh, get it over there and use it for what I got her for. Oh 
old girl hasn't been started in a while, but let's see if she fires up right away. Don't need the fan. 60 degrees out. Oh yeah, fire's right up. All right, so I didn't say it, but the top valve housing bolts are out. There's just four on the top. And you can see there's a crack there, a separation. And I've got it supported on the straps from the loader. So basically, I'm gonna take my pry bar and I'm gonna snick it off the bell housing studs and lift it on up out of there. Okay, she's loose, just hanging there. So I think, I don't even have to take the hood off like this because I just have it propped, you know, almost vertical. So I think I can just gently, ever so gently come straight up and pull this out of here. See if I can get my tractor started. I gotta prime my tractor. Somehow I lost the fuel prime. I think part of working around here is, you know, fixing your equipment has it breaks as you uh, have to do the job, so. Let's see if it works. Well, I got the engine out. I haven't got this started yet, but it was already up in the air and loose from the transmission hanging by the bucket when I went to try to restart that. Anyway, I ended up cranking the tractor over with the compression release pulled, and that works the hydraulic pump at a pretty fast speed, and I could raise the loader like that, and then I just hooked her to the service truck and pulled her back. So yesterday was just, uh, just a litany of failures uh, Today is a nice cold windy day. I know you can't tell but it is so hopefully the wind doesn't hit the camera too hard But yesterday between the camera and this tractor. I was just having all kinds of issues this starter is okay, but I just Yeah, you know, it's just I think for whatever reason it's not a high quality starter. It just, it wants to give a few tries and then if it doesn't start right away, then it'll just sit there and click until it gives it some time to sit again. So yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully we'll get that resolved. Here's our engine in the cold light of morning. Uh, I couldn't really show it to you real well before down underneath, but that is the what's left of the bearing for the number two rod. And they're all pretty well chewed up. So yeah, I did finally manage to, I actually had to get that piston out to turn the crankshaft around properly. Clearances are very tight up in there. And with the rod sticking down, it wanted to get in the way of the crankshaft turning once it was off the journal. So. And I didn't want to go back on the journal nice because I couldn't get the piston down again and went move up it went move down Well, I just got down there and just absolutely beat the snot out of it and managed to free it up out of the bore And I could turn the crankshaft around because I had to get the torque converter bolts out Anyway, that's all done Hopefully this engine is out of our life So the very 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 first thing I'm gonna do is drain the coolant into a properly approved container uh, uh, oh, can't get that doohickey off. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna turn that valve out and drain it. So it's draining, so we'll drain that into a properly approved container. Approved! Well, I finally got the tractor running again. The configuration I'm running in it now is I have an electric pump coming right off the tank. I probably can't see it up there. Oh, here, let me pop the hood for you. I have an electric pump coming right off the top of the tank there. That pushes it into the first stage filter. And that pushes it to the mechanical feed pump. 
and that pushes it up to the second stage filter and down to the injection pump. So the reason I added the electric pump and the reason I added it where I did is because I was still getting air bubbles in the system. I could get it to run for a while with the just the mechanical pump, but it was getting finicky. I have a feeling the seals in that pump might be going bad or something. It's not, I don't think it's pumping quite as much as it should, like developing the suction or whatever to pull it through all the filters and everything. I was getting air up here in this forward section. And then this filter would start to drop down a little bit and then it went feed and this filter would start to dry and then it would just, the engine would cut out because it wasn't getting pressure to the back of the pump. But as soon as I would bleed it, pump it up again, and drain it and the fitting in the back of the pump right up to the injection pump make sure it was pressurized it would start right up but it would only run for a while until it ran out of pressure in the lines and then it would die and i could do that repeatedly and it was just the same thing that's all fixed so now we can proceed with actual work that i'm supposed to be doing okay step one i'm gonna pull that battery and i'm gonna see if i can save it The idea here is to just, you know, see if we can not have to buy a battery to get this vehicle out of my lot. That's the goal. I'm sure the customer will have to buy one down the road. Charging away there. All right, well, we'll let her percolate for a week or two and, and we'll see where we're at. I am going to start stripping this down and getting it ready to pool. I don't know if you could see that very well, but the whole radiator was punched in and the fans were tight against the exhaust shield. You kind of see the damage here on the condenser and that's probably why the AC doesn't work. Uh, and something really punched it in the front there. You know, you can see the whole frame is bent in. Uh, they got into their accident and the fans were deformed and this fan wouldn't even spin Anyway, I couldn't even get the shield out because it has to clear this O2 sensor. I couldn't get the shield out without pulling the radiator. It was so tight against it. Now I can get to everything on the front here. I wouldn't have had to pull the radiator except for that. I didn't have to pull it in that vehicle. So that still has the radiator in, which is, you know, you got to disconnect the transmission lines. In this case, I just cut them because the transmission's bad anyway. So now I can just pull off the exhaust and disconnect this wiring harness over here and pull the wiring harness back that way we'll just keep cruising along here that's most of the stuff i'm going to strip out up here except i have to go down underneath to take out exhaust bolts and there's two lower intake manifold bolts that have to come out before I can I have to get down there to access engine mounts and then when I'm ready to disconnect it I'll just pull those two air conditioner lines off well let's just install a little bit of shop floor here all right well that board is just rotten and awful but Still better than rolling across the sand here, so next step is we got to get this thing up in the air so I have some room to work under there. All right, she's up in the air. That one looks a little crooked, but eh, it's just safety. She's not going anywhere. Okay, now we can crawl under and start taking out some of those bolts. 
So to take this exhaust off, there's a wire clip we got to get for this O2 sensor, and we got to take the lower exhaust pipe off. Oh yeah, we got to take this splash guard thing off. On the other one, I took this brace off because I needed to get in there with pry bars and stuff, but I think if I pull this exhaust pipe off, I think I can get to that access panel and then I can get in there to get the torque converter bolts and all the other bolts I need, I think, maybe. Okay, splash guard is off. I also took out the two bolts that hold this section to the catalytic converter section. Now the only thing holding this on is there's a bracket that goes up on each side of the engine block. As you can see, these are tremendously rusted and I don't really wanna worry about those right now. So I'm gonna try to take the ones off that go into the block. There's one there and there's one hiding up in there. That's just a joy to get to, but I'm gonna try to pull them out. And then I should just be able to lift the catalytic converter section up and out. I have those two bracket bolts out. I should just be able to pull that exhaust out because I already took out all the bolts that hold it into the head. All the wires are free. Make sure you do that before you start yanking on stuff. What's next? Let me bring you in here. So now with that out, you can see how much room we have in here. And we can get to the bolts real nice for the bell housing. That should pretty well clear up the front of the engine. So we're gonna pull this pipe off so we can get to the access plate for the torque converter and the intake manifold. And then there's a few more mounts down there. There's a mount where the drive shaft mounts to the block. There's only one mount, engine mount we have to pull and that's the front one. All these studs are in good shape. Probably should put those nuts back on before I lose them. Also the brackets. Uh, this is the easiest way to keep from losing things and to remember where they go. Put this stuff back in. Alright, got that hardware back on, just lightly. So, let's crawl under and see what it's going to take to get this exhaust off. Probably going to have to do this on the other one as well. Oh, it's tight. Oh, those are just rusted. Well, these don't have to go back on. Might just have to cut this exhaust pipe off. Might just zip it. Right through here. This is the way. All right. One exhaust pipe removed. So now with the exhaust out, let's scooch on up under there and see what we got. Okay. So there's a bolt there. <laughs> And there's one up here, and I think that's, those are the only two on the intake. And then we should be able to lift the intake up out of there. And then here, this is bolted to the engine, that has to come off. Then we can pull this inspection cover off here and get to the torque converter bolts. Alright, have those two lower intake bolts out. Think. Okay. Uh, what am I tied to? Oh, there's a I got one off, I didn't see that one up there. Here's the intake. 
Now, if we can get down in here, you can see the wiring harness that runs along under that intake. There's two bolts that hold that on, and there's a big cluster of grounds here. I'll crawl under there and see if I can find the bolts that hold that harness in. You can look for them, they're not too hard. You can just kind of feel around down there. I'll pull those out so I can separate the harness from the engine and back those wires away. Okay, I have the wiring harness freed from the engine. And I do have to remember to take off this coolant line yet. And then it's just, oh, and I did get the bolts out of the bracket from the drive shaft down there. See, the only thing holding this in is this front engine mount up here and the connection to the transmission. So I guess it's time to take out bell housing and torque converter bolts. And I think I'm going to have to take the engine mount off the engine because I think I'm going to have to shift it forward a little bit this way to clear the flex plate from the bell housing. But we can't do that till we're suspending the engine either by a jack or the tractor. I'll probably put a jack under it first to get that mount off. Well, I got all the bell housing bolts out, all the torque converter bolts out. Basically the only thing holding that engine in is the front engine mount. All right, so we're pretty well prepped here. The only thing that still bothers me about this is on the rear where that drive shaft mount is, the upper oil pan kind of goes under it. Let me show you. There's a lip here, right here, and the, the drive shaft block sits in here. So to get off of that, we kind of have to go we kind of have to rotate the engine a little bit as we lift it, which I don't really like the idea of. It's not ideal, but I, th I think I think that I can do it. That's what I'm talking about here. And the uh, it sits like this, and the oil pan goes under the bottom of it there. Kind of annoying, but I don't really want to pull the drive shaft or anything, and I think this might be doable i think it's going to be harder going down in because we're going to have to you know wiggle it in while trying to get the flex plate into the bell housing there so i've pretty much got this prepped i took off this exhaust section because i'm going to have to be able to get in there without with the oil pan on and when i was getting in there before the oil pan was already off well i went to unbolt it but it was rusted solid and well, I ended up just cutting the bolts, which is fine. Uh, we will need a new gasket there, but that's okay. Uh, they weld the nuts on these. The nuts are welded to the flange on the removable side, and then the bolts go through the back. But they were both so rusted, I, I couldn't possibly turn them, even beating on it with a hammer. I did give it a go with penetrating oil, but it did not work. So we're going to pull that engine out. That's the next step. Before we pull it in here, we'll remove this power steering pump. We'll take the line off the pump and then this line off the reservoir up here. And we'll take that pump up and out. And we'll just leave this pump attached to this engine. Same thing with the air conditioner compressor. We will disconnect the air conditioner lines here and just pull it with the compressor on there. And then once we get the engine in here, we'll bolt this compressor in and then we don't have to open the AC system. That's just extra cost. I don't want to give to the customer. I don't know anything about this AC system, but I don't want to open it up if I don't have to. So at last, the time has come upon us to test this tensile strength of everything we have forgotten to disconnect on this engine. So I'm going to remove some of this stuff here. Pull it out of the way, pull AC lines. I can start taking this mount off. I can take the three bolts that hold the mount to the frame of the car off because gravity holds that in. And there's one bolt I needed. There's a nut that holds that to the engine on the bottom. And then there's two bolts that hold that on. And I can't take those off because those keep the engine from, you know, dropping out of the car like a 
giant rock. Let's clear some things out of the way and then we can get everything hooked up to do the pool. And so those two bolts are the only thing holding it in. I have this jack down here under the oil pan so that when I take these two bolts out, it won't drop. And then we can bring our tractor in and hook it up and lift it. Or of course, we'll have to pry it off the bell housing. We'll have to come this way and then up, but let's start that process. Take those bolts out. Put you guys on camera here so that you can see all the carnage when I forgot something and it drops down through the bottom of the car like a stone in a pond. That's always fun. No, no it isn't. Okay. Engine mount removed. So this is completely unbolted. The only thing holding it in is the actual studs that go from the engine block into the bell housing. All the bolts are out. If I were to pry this right now, it would you know, be completely loose, but we're not gonna do that yet. So this is gonna be tight. Let me show you. So down here, there's not very much room between the frame and the engine, but we can lift it. It's not much to get up above that. So I might be able to do that with my jack once the engine is free. Just, you know, lifting this end of the engine will kind of lift the transmission up a little bit that way. And hopefully we'll be able to clear that. Let's get some straps and put them on here and figure out how we're going to do that. And then we'll get our lifting device in place. Named Svetlana. All right, I know this is gonna be hard to see because of everything that's here. I'm gonna film it as best I can. Basically what I'm gonna do is snick that bell housing loose while trying to keep as much of my body as possible out from under this rig. So I'm gonna start the tractor up and then I'm gonna snick that loose. And well, once the tractor's running, you probably won't be able to hear me talk. So I'll do the best I can to keep out of the way of the camera and we'll just try to get this thing up on out of here. bit of a problem there suddenly spraying a fuel line and a tractor well we, you can't see it anymore but we got a hole in that line it's right about down there <laughs> I was looking over and suddenly I felt the spray in the air and smelled diesel and well no this will rust for a while all right now we got to fix that before we can keep going that's fine you know, I'll tell you what, that's something easy. I can take care of that. <laughs> well, we got the diesel line fixed. I can tell you one thing, between this video and the last video, Svetlana wants nothing to do with these RAV4s. And <laughs> I, can, I can say I agree with her. I don't like working on front wheel drive either. So at least Svetlana and I are in agreement. I got that hose all wrapped up again. I don't think the original hose on there was actually fuel rated but i didn't see any markings on it either but that was an original hose from when i got the tractor that's replaced now we get back to this so we're close very close i think i have to get down under there and i think it's uh still you know it's doesn't want to come off the bottom rear there somehow so i'll crawl down there real quick and see what we've got It's just the angles and everything weren't so hot. We're gonna have a fun time aligning this back in is what that means, but we'll figure it out. That is a problem for later. Right now, let's try to get this up and out. Let me show you what we got here. We are free and I think clear. So I think at this point, it's just up and out. Assuming Svetlana will cooperate. Well, it's out. So now I've got two cars without engines. Mm-hmm. Yep, that wasn't too bad. 
uh, we just got a little wedged up because of the angle there, but a little bit of prying and judicious prying in the right places. And oh, well, this flex plate isn't too worn. You can see where somebody banged into the teeth once or twice, but they're not really chipped. You just see the bare metal. Still got a factory paint mark. Uh, you know, it's a little rusty inside. I don't see any oil being slung around from the rear main seal, so. Well, in that case, I'll probably just, you know, recommend to the customer to, well, hope we don't need that. I think that was the plug I accidentally pulled out in the back of the manifold, but that's the old wire harness. We don't care so much about that. All right, let's uh, cover and cap this thing and order the parts we need to put this thing back together, I think. All right, we're going to take a little peek inside this engine. We'll have to replace the valve cover gasket, but it's a sacrifice you make for some peace of mind, maybe, to know things are okay. There's oil on the top end from last it was run. Overall, this is nice and clean, especially compared to the other engine. There's no sludge or oil buildup. I don't see anything alarming. I don't see anything even remotely alarming. Chain looks like it's in good shape. It's not overly worn. I can't really see much wear at all on it. And the tensioner is working. The tensioner is not pushed out very far at all. What happens is the tensioner pushes into one of the chain guides that goes up this way and pushes the guide and the chain over as it loosens up. And it's not pushed in that far. So not very worn at all. That's good. All right. Well, for now, we'll button that back up. It's finally time to put this engine in. First thing we need to do that I haven't done yet is take out the old power steering pump. I've been leaving the system sealed as long as possible till right before I put the engine in. So now's the time to take that out. And we need to get the reservoir out of the way. I'm just gonna unbolt these AC lines like we did on the other car and pull this bracket out. Disconnect the line here and disconnect the line from the pump down there. And disconnect the reservoir line here from the steel line. Then we'll pull that out of the way, we'll have the pump out of the way, and we can drop the engine down in. I think I'm going to have to kind of hold it like this somehow. Maybe I'll put a strap up here, a uh, bungee cord or something, just to kind of hold it in this position so that it doesn't get in a position where once we have the engine in we can't rotate it. Because if it's wrong when we put the engine in, we'll have to pull the engine out again <laughs> to get that slotted in right. So uh or unbolt that i don't know but i don't want to mess with that i want to do it right the first time so i think that's it let's get those parts out and cleared and then we can get to seeing how our engine fits in here I just have this lightly secured in the position that it bolts onto up to here. I think we're ready to kind of ease the engine down in here. It's going to be a slow and delicate process because there's just me. Ordinarily, I'd like to have a spotter or something or somebody to help guide the engine, but I think it's going to be kind of, you know, me running back and forth like a chicken while I lower and look and lower and look and guide and lower and look and guide and lower and look. So I'll go put you guys back there and you can just kind of watch and enjoy me running around like a chick with my head cut off. And I'll just kind of slot this thing down in there. So let's get to it.
Okay, so I have it roughly in position. I have it up in the air because, on the front, because I have to work this ledge here under the drive shaft. <laughs> it's such a stupid design. Uh, so I kind of got to lower and wiggle the engine this way at the same time, and I don't have much room to go forward because the AC compressor there. I don't want to crush the radiator, so I want to be real gentle. Everything else is clear. Got the wire harness clear of the pump and everything, and our steering pump. And it's not quite aligned right because I have it shoved this way, so I can try to clear that ledge. Uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> and of course, I have to work it. I have to work this inside this up and around inside that uh, mount there. and. You know some wiggling and jostling and make sure not to damage this fan anymore i have oh, i haven't damaged it that's surprising We got that in position down there. Don't know if you're able to see it or not. Probably not. So I'm going to start putting in bell housing bolts and snipping this together since it's on the pegs. And then I can start tightening those mounts and things down. I have all the front mount bolts in and I have the top bell housing bolts in. I got to put the lower ones in and the flex plate bolts in and I want to get the power steering lines back on that pump so I leave it open for as little as possible. Power steering is on. Uh, we have the AC line secured back on there. One thing I did notice I forgot when I took the original engine apart, sometimes these plugs they're very small wires and if you don't pull the plug out just perfect you can rip the wires out of the plug and I forgot I did that with this one fortunately we have duplicate wiring harness over here that's blue and yellow so that would be blue and yellow I believe this one so we can uh, remove this I also need to put the belt back on this tensioner is very tight which is good the reason I took the belt off was to swap out the AC compressor. Otherwise, I would have just left it on and dropped it in that way. But I don't know if I mentioned it on this car. This dipstick was frozen in here when we went to look at the car. And we did get it out. But the dipstick tube is pretty corroded. And that's an easy fix. I have the dipstick and tube from the old engine that works just fine. We'll just take that off and pop that out. I did hook up some of the electrical connections here so far i still have to be able to take the valve cover off because i want to replace that gasket then we can't start putting the wiring harness and everything back on until we have that replaced all right so this rav4 engine is notoriously hard to get to the belt tensioner let me show you a quick and easy solution you can put something on up here but you don't have the swing you need to actually compress that tensioner real good even if you put a cheater bar on it you can do it but at the same time you're holding it, you also have to slip the belt on. So if you're a one-person operation, an easier solution, put your 19 millimeter on there and run a ratchet strap. And then you can get your belt on. Easiest way to do it is just put it on all the groove, grooved pulleys and the tensioner pulley first. And then go up around from the front of the car and slip it on this one last. This idler here because it's smooth and it'll slip on really easy. You don't have to get it over the grooved edge of the regular pulleys. Make sure your belt is on and and you can just release your tension. Well, maybe you can if you're not stuck like I am. <laughs> well, we'll just smack that off with a hammer and then we'll be good to go.
<clears throat> let me get my hammer. All right, let's release this tensioner. I can do this left-handed, so if I miss, it's not my fault. There we go. Belt tension released. We've got auto tool removal here. So that's an easy way to do that. Before you do that, just make sure your belt is on all the grooved pulleys because, you know, otherwise you could damage your belt if you're going to release the tension that way. So belt installed. So as far as the dipstick goes, it's just one bolt here that holds the tube on and you can work the tube out. Make sure the bottom is clean so you don't get junk down in there when you do it. And then you can just lift it up and pull it right out. So here's my good dipstick that is in much better condition. We'll clean that up and we'll put a new O-ring on it before we put it in. Alright, nice new dipstick. Now let's address that electrical connector over there. Well, hello there, little electrical connector. Alright, this is all we need. I don't care about this harness. This vehicle's never going to run again. There we go. All right, now we're just waiting on gaskets. Time to start putting parts back on this engine. So I picked the better of the two intakes. We're gonna replace the gasket. Then we're gonna mount it to the block. We're gonna clean up back here as best we can. Make sure those ports don't have anything in them. Suck them out with our vacuum cleaner. Then we will mount this intake. I'll weasel it back in there again, like it was. Is the intake installed there's one two three four and this bolt is almost impossible to get to you practically got to stand on your head you can only see it from up here and yeah anyway it's a bear to get off it's a bear to get on so fuel injection rail next fuel rail is on so I think we're ready to put on the throttle body. Got to make sure when you do this that you don't miss any lines. There's a coolant circuit that goes through the throttle body in addition to the wiring. So you can't forget any, any of that. This is emission stuff here. Make sure you get everything hooked up again when you do this. All right, I know this is all a little hard to see back here when I'm working on it. There's two electrical connections for throttle and IAC. And then there's coolant lines here that run a circuit through, I guess, to pre-warm your throttle body. And there's this line here that comes up to your, I think your air box, if I remember correctly. And then three bolts that hold it on and your throttle. And that's pretty much it. Next step, I'm gonna replace the gaskets on the valve cover. it for the valve cover we got the coils back on the plugs now I'm gonna lay out the wiring harness and make sure we have everything in the right place and start hooking up the wiring that I can before I put the exhaust on so exhaust is next I'm gonna clean up the ports here and I'm gonna clean this up with wire brush the gasket that you get aftermarket I don't know if you can actually get, these might be more expensive or something, I don't know, the factory gasket are these two pieces of metal, I guess the compress stainless steel or some stainless steel copper alloy, not sure, but this is what we're putting back on because that's the new one I have. Clean this up and put it on.
exhaust manifold is on all of the o2 sensors are hooked up we need to run the upper radiator hose I believe that all of our with the exception of these that go to i think emission sensors all of our electrical is hooked up we need to run this hose here and i think we'll be done up here other than fluids and hooking stuff up and that kind of things so That's it for up here. Got the air box on with the, what looked like a new air filter, so I didn't replace it. Got all the emission stuff hooked up here. Got the air box hooked up. There's a, I guess that's a mass airflow sensor or something there. Only one thing left to do, and that is the lower exhaust pipe. This, I need to find some bolts to secure that since I had to cut them off, but time to put that on. All right, lower exhaust pipe is in. Well, I mean, they're all lower exhaust pipes. You know what I mean. Exhaust pipe is in. And at some point I am gonna change the oil in this engine, but we're gonna make sure it runs first before we, you know, do all that. We still don't know if the transmission works. I'm gonna fill the power steering. I'm gonna fill the coolant. And I think that's it before we hook up the battery and smoke tester and fire. We got fluids. Uh, let's, I don't know, let's try and start it, see what happens. It's running, that's a good sign. We got oil pressure. Okay, uh, I do have a check engine light, so I'm gonna hook up my scanner and I did not clear the codes beforehand, so it might be left over from before stored code from the other engine. So let's hook up the scanner and take a look at that. All right, let's see what kind of codes we got here. shift solenoid. That's not a good sign. AF sensor, heater circuit malfunction, bank one, sensor one. Well, uh, I guess the next step is to check the functionality. Overdrive switch works. So I guess we'll take her down off the stands and make sure all the fluids topped off. So this car had, ooh, oofta, 204,917 miles. I'll check the wiring on that sensor. Let's see if it moves. I mean, if it's just a shift solenoid, I don't know. Let's, uh, we'll test forward and reverse and do that for starters, I guess. So I'm still getting the P1135 code. I jiggled the harness and it didn't go away. So it's either a wiring issue with the sensor or the ECM. So I'm gonna replace this sensor. This is bank one, sensor one. Of course, this is bank two. Bank one's the driver's side. Sensor one is the upstream sensor. So we're gonna replace that. See if it changes anything. 
Went and found the holiest gloves I could find. I'm sure that'll be fine. Oh, I don't know why I torture myself like this. Well, we got a different sensor. Let's see what happens. Will it be same code for 1200, Alex? Right. Race was successful. We should relink and get one code for the transmission. Yep, okay, let's start it. Last time it took it a couple a couple seconds at the very minimum to register. It sounds like it's running a little better. Alright, let's let it run for a couple minutes and Might have been it, just a bad O2 sensor. Yeah, guess that was it. Okay, got lucky. No worrying problems, that's good. Now we just have to resolve that. I mean, it could be just a bad <coughs> or stuck solenoid in the transmission. And um, I don't know which solenoid that is, but it might shift without it. I don't know. Let's take it for a drive and see what happens, I guess. All right, headlights work? I don't know, maybe. Let's take her for a little test drive here. Uh, I'll throw my scanner on the floor. Mm -hmm. Let's throw for a spin and count gears. I do not like the throttle response, but well, let's see what happens. Okay, brakes work, that's good. first gear shifting still not shifting there we shifted sorry for the sorry for the wind noise there let me put my windows up got some weird noises from it I'm sure that's perfectly normal. Well, there, I think we got fourth gear and torque converter lockup. Oh, either that or it's jumping in and out of torque converter lockup. It's got a little bit of a lurch to it. Let's get off the main road here and count gears again. Complete stuff should be in first gear. It's really hesitating. I don't think it downshifted properly. That's pedal to the floor. Oh, she's not shifting right. Try manually shifting. So that's low. Shifting to two. Oh, felt something. Oh. She's definitely not shifting right. Let's put it back to drive again here. I'm not shifting right at all. Alright. Well, I don't know what is going to happen, what the customer is going to decide with this. The engine runs fantastic, but the transmission's not shifting right. And it's throwing that code for solenoid B. So we got the engine running. That was our mandate and our goal. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have more on this car. It depends what the customer decides. But that's where we're at right now. Maybe this video will help somebody out. If you have to take any of those parts off your engine, you can kind of see real quick where they go or how to get them off. And it's really not that bad to work on. There's just a few bolts that are really hard to get to. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate likes, subscribes. Uh, really helps my motivation to do projects like that, like this, to try and help people out. And, you know, just show us what we're doing. And hey, I can do this in the middle of my lawn with you know just basic tools. And it's not terrifically difficult. If I can do it, you can probably do it too. So thanks for watching.